And um, I'm going to start sharing my screens. Let me pop over. Well, actually, let me. I haven't had time to uh, to kill some of my extraneous windows on the computer here before I actually show uh, what's going on. So, okay, I've simplified things a little bit. Let me share my screen. Um, and again, this has been part of a whole week long series on Moodle. Uh, Monday was about just kind of a basic orientation, primarily for faculty who really have uh, had little experience with Moodle in the past. Tuesday was about adding content. Wednesday, learning activities, yesterday, assessments. Today, I want to round out the week, and I'm not sure how rushed or um, leisurely today's session will be, just to cover some various administrative tools that um, can be very useful, and I'm not sure a lot of faculty know about. And this ties in, uh, many of these really relate directly to okay, I've, I've put my Moodle course together, what are tools that can actually help me make it run effectively, make sure students are on track, are, are going through the materials in the way I want them to, um, and, and so forth. So what I thought I'd put on the docket, and we'll see what we get through and what people are most interested in, um, we'll quickly look at attendance because that's uh, kind of a, um, administrative task that can be a nuisance, but there are some uh, things you can do with the attendance activity in Moodle. Uh, make a few comments about the course calendar. Really want to focus a little bit more on how you can use the course participation report and completion tracking and conditional release to really make sure that you're keeping students on track in your Moodle course, especially if you have and will be continuing to, to work from a remote uh, instruction perspective. And uh, definitely I want to take a look at the accessibility report. There are some other things here that I may just mention. And um, you know, I'm sharing my screen so I'm not looking at the chat a lot but if you could all just put into the chat what experience you might have had or or not had in the past with these different reports the the uh, course participation report completion tracking and conditional release and um, um, I'll I'll have a chance to review those later when we save the chat so uh, I hopefully that sounds like a plan um, um, I'm going to really kind of move back and forth between a couple of my Moodle course spaces as we go through that. I've got essentially a, a Moodle space that I, I ended up not using a couple of uh, springs ago, or actually more, like four years ago now, when I took students out to Arizona on a spring break trip. Uh, so this is a nice empty shell, and I've got my geology course from this last fall that um, I think I can pull up some of these reports without uh, compromising too much student information, at least for the purposes of our, of our workshop here. So uh, just quickly, attendance. Uh, Marie has linked in uh, the directions for setting up and using the attendance. Uh, it's a fairly quick process. Um, it is one of the activities you can select from the activity chooser. Uh, before we do that, though, um, you'll want to decide if you are taking attendance in Moodle just as a way to keep a record and to, to share with the students what your record is on their attendance, or whether you're going to have the attendance activity factor directly into the gradebook. Um, mostly I find when I work with faculty, they, they want to take attendance data and, and they many of them want that to be included in the grades, but they don't necessarily want the attendance activity itself calculating the attendance grade to go into the Moodle gradebook. And, and the way that factors in is when you click add an activity or resource and select attendance and click add, 
and uh, I mean, you can just leave it called attendance. By default, uh, Moodle is going to add this as a graded activity. And if you want control over how you take the attendance data and turn it into a grade in the Moodle gradebook, you don't necessarily want the attendance activity doing this automatically for you. So um, you probably, if that's the case, you want to change this from being a graded activity that's worth 100 points to having no grade. And then it will not go into the grade book. It won't, you know, it won't be this uh, weird item that's in your grade book that you have to uh, plan your grade book around. Uh, you don't really need to set any of these other things. You click save and return to course, and then the attendance activity is there. You um, would be well served as well to add the attendance block if you're going to add the attendance activity. And for you as the instructor, it gives you the ability to go straight into the report or to go to take attendance and so forth. What the attendance block will show to the student is their individual attendance record. And it's right there on the front page. They don't have to click into the attendance block to see it. Uh, so if you're going to add attendance activity, go ahead and add the attendance block. Just a couple of points here on setting up and using attendance. Um, by default, there are no scheduled sessions because the attendance block in Moodle does not know your course's banner information about when it is, when the course is scheduled, when the first uh, day of the term is, when the last day of the term is. I mean, your Moodle course knows that, but the attendance block is not smart enough to know, oh, I've uh, got twice weekly sessions for these 15 weeks. So the first thing you need to do is add sessions. And we're going to pretend that this is a um, fall course that I'm working on here. So I'm going to start in my first session in August. Uh, I forget what the first day of the class is. You can always p pull up the calendar. Uh, th August 31st would be the first uh, Monday of classes. Let's say this is a Monday, Thursday class. You do not have to fill in the time, but if you're compulsive like I am, uh, I'd say it's a 10.30 class. You can put that in, goes till 12.10. And um, the default is for Moodle to create a calendar event for each session, which can really clutter up your calendar. Personally, I would unselect that. And then you could create these sessions one by one, go through the whole, all 15 weeks of the semester. But you can do multiple sections here and say, OK, uh, I want to repeat this every week. My class meets every week and it meets on Monday. It meets on Thursday from those times. And I'm going to start with August 31st. And I'm going to go through until the end of the semester in December. And our last Thursday of the class would be probably the 10th because I, well, let me, let me go through the 17th because I don't know whether my final exam is going to be on the Monday or the Thursday of final exam week. And if you wanted to, you could allow students to record their own attendance. I don't know of any faculty who have used that, so I don't know, you know um, how that works for them. But you set this up, multiple sections. It's Monday, Thursday, starts here, goes to here. Click Add, and there you have your sessions. And then when the first day of class comes around, you would be able to come in here, uh, look at the sessions, say, OK, I need to record the attendance for Monday, first day of class. You can click on this little green item here. And I get basically my roster. and um, 
by default, Moodle, uh, Moodle attendance comes with present, absent, there is late, and there is excused. Let's say all five of my students actually showed up for the first day of class. I could click on the button up here at the top to set that status for all users. Well, let's say sample student four was late. I could change their uh, data to late. Click Save Attendance. And then that attendance is now in Moodle. I can come back in here and uh, make changes if I need. I can put in comments, uh, you know, arrive 15 minutes late. And so this provides a nice central space for you to keep track of attendance, but it also, um, you know, each of those students, when they log into Moodle, they would see in the attendance block uh, what's recorded for their individual attendance. So you don't have to hopefully field questions with, you know, uh, what do you have recorded for, for my attendance on such and such a date. Um, just quickly, one other thing. As I said, by default, um, Moodle come the, the attendance block, which is actually not part of core Moodle. It's, a, it's an add-on that uh, was developed by the Moodle community that we've added to Moodle. Comes with these, um, this status set by default. Uh, basically, in terms of point values, um, the attendance block by default is giving students two points for each time they show up, zero points for every time they're absent, only one point if they're late. This excused uh, default is one point, which I'm not sure that that makes any sense to me. Uh, I mean, if I've excused them, why should they be penalized? Um, Generally speaking, I tend to get rid of the excused, and if I have excused them for some reason, I might um, either not record the data at all for them for that particular day, or uh, if, if they have been excused and they've made up the work somehow, I would mark them as present, but just put a note saying, you know, they were absent from class, but excused and made up the work. So you can, you don't have to, to uh, take the default uh, present, late, excused, absent. So that's one thing you could do. The other thing you might want to consider doing is to, rather than just recording uh, attendance, whether they're present or absent, you could actually add additional um, criteria here. full participation and say give them a five points if they were uh, you know really on the ball there and um, uh, give a kind of a standard participation of uh, four points and um, poor or, or limited participation, whatever you want to call these. You know, you were there, but only in body, not in spirit. You know, maybe give that a three. And then, you know, add an absent. If you really weren't there, you don't get any points at all. And in that way, uh, turn this into not just a present absent uh, participation. Oh, I didn't actually get this. But turn this into a full uh, way to actually record or give students out points for each session on how well they are actually participating and turn this not into an attendance activity, but a participation record. So uh, again, it's pretty straightforward to add the attendance activity. Uh, a lot of faculty um, like that we have it there. Um, you can, uh, um, you know, use it however you wish to. You can use it to record attendance. You can change it into a participation log. 
um, it's a nice place to um, to keep records. And then, you know, if I were going to do that participation approach, where I've actually am having, um, I'm recording a, a real score every day for the students, then I actually might want to have that go straight into the into the gradebook. Um, course calendar. Um, I won't say a lot about the course calendar, uh, but it is a good tool to keep students on track. If you add uh, items like quizzes or assignments that have uh, due dates attached to them, Moodle will automatically put them onto the course calendar. So you can, in your course, um, add one of two blocks. You really don't need to add both of them. There is a calendar block, but there's also an upcoming activities block, which I've already, upcoming events block that I've already added. So if I add a, um, an assignment here, you know, final project, and I'm going to um, just give it a due date of July 3rd. I'm not going to change this. It's kind of a weird date for a final project for a full course, but this will work out better for, um, for the workshop here. If I click Save and Return to Course, the uh, project is there. It also shows up in the Upcoming Events block. And on the upcoming events block, there is a link that you and your students can use to go to the calendar. If you add the calendar block, it's uh, going to look like this. That, um, you know, there is uh, something coming up in, uh, on the third, this final project is due. Again, you really don't need both of these. Um, I find a, I'm more likely to use the upcoming events block because it really kind of focuses on what is coming up uh, for the students. Uh, the other way this can be useful is um, if your students are making use of their Moodle dashboard. Uh, which is available through the navigation block from any place in Moodle. If, uh, you or your students click on the dashboard and take a look at not only the overview of courses and so forth, but by default, um, there is a timeline on the dashboard and this will aggregate uh, due dates and other calendar dates from across all of a student's uh, courses. And so uh, if we show a few more here, we should see, ah, uh, yeah, here's that uh, final project due July 3rd. Okay. So again, all of these are just uh, tips and, and tricks for uh, tools you can use to keep students on track. If you do go to the calendar, I mean, this will only by default uh, add things like quizzes and assignments where you have uh, established a due date in the um, in the in the settings for those activities. But you can add other things as well. If you want students to read chapter three on on July second, you can go to the calendar and uh, create a new event for your course. And call it, uh, you know, read chapter three. And I said July 2nd. And um, make this a course level event so that all students see it. You could put events on the calendar for specific users. Or if you have set up groups, you could um, put an event on the calendar for group A or for group B. But the default is a course level calendar item. And uh, click Save. And now uh, on the calendar, there is this item for read chapter three. And that would show up, it should show up in the Upcoming events block. 
yeah, read chapter three on this date. Final project is due here. So again, the more things you can get into the course calendar, just the easier it is you can uh, hopefully keep students on track. Okay. So those are both kind of low-level tools. Uh, any questions in the chat, Marie? Uh, not seeing any questions right now. Okay. Uh, these next tools um, are a little bit more powerful, I think, uh, and um, I, I find I myself use this course participation uh, uh, a lot. I tend to always have uh, completion tracking turned on so that my students can uh, have a view of what they have uh, completed and what they haven't. Um, I, I myself don't use conditional release maybe as much as, uh, as I would, could make use of, but we'll go through, um, we'll go th through these three in turn. Course participation report is nice because it lets you see very quickly who has either viewed or posted to a particular resource or activity and who hasn't. And it's the who hasn't it, which is uh, quite useful. So, for example, if we go in to my full course, and um, uh, just go into uh, okay. So, if you want to use the course participation report. Basically, you go into your course administration block. Under reports, there are a whole variety of reports. Course participation will allow you to select the item you're interested in. So um, which of my students has uh, actually gone into the folder where I have listed all of the open textbooks that we're using and which students haven't. And um, you can decide how long you're going to look back. You know, so how many of my students from the fall have looked at that in the last week? Well, probably none of them. But let me go back the whole year so I can pick up all of the activity from last fall. I want to see student activity, and I just want to see who's gone into that folder to view uh, what's in that folder. And if I click uh, go, um, I will um, see um, who's, uh, for each of my students, who has gone in that folder, who hasn't, how many times that uh, student has gone in. And uh, if you show all of your students, you can select all of the no's. You know, so these two students who haven't gone into the folder, and you can send the message and say, you know, don't forget, our uh, texts are all listed here in this folder. You should go in and take a look. So um, let me get out of here. That, um, that approach is very useful. So uh, actually, I guess I could have done that over here. Again, uh, course administration, reports, um, course participation. Don't have a lot of activities here, but select that assignment. Look back over the last two weeks and which of my students have actually posted their final project to that assignment. And I click uh, go. Again, I get that list of students. In this case, none of them have. I can select all of those no's. I can send them a message saying, come on, people, your project is due you know, next week. Uh, let's work on getting them in. So that's a very useful way. Now, I could, I could have just sent out a broadcast course announcement to everyone saying, you know, don't forget our projects are due, uh, I forget what it was, January 5th. Um, the disadvantage of that is if two thirds of your students have already submitted their assignment to the final project and you're sending out a course wide uh, a course announcement, you're basically spamming two thirds of the course with an announcement that uh, doesn't apply to them. 
and they're saying, well, I already submitted it. Why am I getting this? So if you use the, again, if you use the course participation report, then you can identify specifically those students who haven't completed something yet and send them a message through the Moodle messaging system rather than using a just kind of a generic um, broadcast email out to everyone. Okay. In terms of completion tracking, um, let me actually add some additional uh, resources and activities here. So I'm sure if I, I mean, here's a PowerPoint. I can drop this PowerPoint into, oh, uh, I should have picked a smaller file. Oh, well. Um, and here's another resource. And I could maybe add a quiz. I won't bother worrying about any of the settings. I won't even bother adding questions to it because um, you know, I don't want to worry about that at this point. Um, with completion tracking, you can set it up so that for each student, for every resource or activity, there will be an indication of whether that student has in some respects completed that activity or not. So let me, um, let me come back in here and maybe I also want to add a page of lecture notes. So I'm gonna add a Moodle page and I'm gonna say lecture notes. And these are not very intelligent notes, but students had to put up with me because I'm the instructor. So um, there is a, you know, a page of lecture notes. By default, none of those have uh, completion tracking turned on at this point yet. So in order to use completion tracking, the first thing you should do is to confirm that uh, completion tracking is enabled. So if you go into your course, and this should be the default on courses that are, are being uh, created now, but um, it's a good idea to go in and check. If you go to the course administration, edit settings, um, you know, this is where you would put in a course summary and a course image to show up on the dashboard if students are using the dashboard. There's a section for completion tracking. And in this course from four years ago, at that point, uh, the default was no. So, uh, you know, I would enable completion tracking. If you look at your fall 2020 courses, this should be enabled, but again, it's a good idea to check. And now I can go in and I can attach uh, completion tracking. I've got a couple of resources. Here's a, a PDF, here's a Moodle page. I've got a couple of um, activities, a quiz, and um, a uh, final project. Let me, add, um, let me add a discussion forum. Final reflections on the course. And uh, I'm gonna make this just a single simple discussion uh, to make it kind of an open-ended uh, discussion. You know, what did you think? And uh, I'll add that to the course. So, um, if I go now into the settings for this PDF that I have uploaded, 
even though I uploaded it by dragging and dropping, I still have access to all of the Moodle settings that I would have available if I added this as a file resource. And down toward the bottom here is um, a section on activity completion. And the default here is do not indicate activity completion. Now, um, you have a couple of options. You can have students manually ma mark when they feel that they have completed an activity, or in this case, a resource. Or then, and so this manually marking uh, something as completed would be um, giving the students control over that. Conditional completion tracking is when you tell Moodle, um, watch for these events, and when these events occur, mark this as completed. So in this case, I'm going to show the activity as complete when the conditions are met. And I'm going to require that students have to view this PDF in order for Moodle to mark it off as completed. And I click Save and Return to Course. And if you're looking very closely, you might see that there is now a checkbox over here that if I were logged into this course as a student, I would there would be this empty checkbox. And it would have this little dashed line around it. And uh, that dashed line probably doesn't mean much to the students if they are not in courses that have a lot of completion tracking turned on. But the dashed line means that the students cannot check um, that as complete or not. It well, the pop-up says that the system will mark it complete according to the conditions. So anytime a student, the first time a student clicks on this to download it, that will be scored by Moodle as uh, having been, as the document having been viewed. And Moodle will then put a check mark into the box for the students. And this is, this is nice because the students can kind of scan down uh, along the length of your course and they can look for these checkboxes and they can see well what are the dash checkboxes where I've already checked off that means I must have done something to complete the activity what are the dash checkboxes that are not checked yet and then you know what do I need to do to do to get those complete and as we'll see let me go in here on lecture notes and click edit settings um, and so we can do activity completion on this as well. But the question is, well, what makes sense for activity completion here? I could set it to be conditional. And as soon as the student clicks on that page to look at it, Moodle will say, oh, it's been looked at. It's complete. But then it will be marked off as complete. And maybe the students only looked at it briefly. If you instead um, make this, students can manually mark the activity as completed. And if I save and return to course, what uh, you will see over here now is a checkbox. And for students, this would be an empty checkbox, but an empty checkbox with a solid line around it. And that would, or you can let the students know that, you know, any of those boxes that have solid lines, when they feel like they have gone back to these lecture notes page enough times and they've worked through it and they're comfortable with the material, they can come over here and manually put in a check mark for themselves and they can kind of tell themselves, oh, okay, I think I'm, I think I'm finished with this and um, I'm going to check it off. So again, the difference between conditional um, completion tracking versus uh, manual completion tracking. Got three different activities. Uh, you can imagine that there would be options for completion tracking for them as well. Um, let's do the final project first. Again, go into edit settings. And down here at the bottom, there would be activity completion. 
Again, you could select for students to be able to manually mark off that they think that they've completed it, but for us, for the various ac um, activities like assignments and quizzes and so forth, probably more than likely you're going to want to have conditional completion tracking. So um, I can set it up so that as soon as the students have looked at this assignment and have submitted to it, if those two conditions are met, then the student will see uh, um, a little check mark show up in the activity. You could wait and say, um, no, students have uh, it's really not complete until I've graded it, but I tend not to select that because as far as I'm concerned, the student is finished with the assignment as soon as they have looked at the assignment activity and submitted their submission. It's, um, it's not the student's job for me to, to grade uh, their, their assignment. So I select these two things, click save and return to course. And again, now there is a little checkbox. As soon as the student has submitted their assignment, Moodle would put a check in here and they would know, okay, I'm, I'm done with this. Um, for, um, for quizzes, you would have again a variety of um, criteria that could be used. Uh, student must view the activity com to complete. Um, now I have not set up this quiz with uh, a requirement of what the passing grade is. So I, you know, I might set up a quiz that has unlimited quiz attempts. Maybe it's a 10 point uh, multiple choice quiz and each time the student takes the quiz they're drawing a random set of 10 questions from a question bank of 50 questions and I require them to uh, get 8 out of 10 for what I'm, I'm classifying as a passing grade. Then um, I could select this and I could select require a passing grade and the student would have to take that quiz enough times until they got an 8 out of 10 and got that passing grade before Moodle would check it off as complete for them. Okay. Or if, um, if I set 8 out of 10 as a passing grade but give them five attempts, I could select both of these. And so if, uh, if a student doesn't get an 8 out of 10 on the first four attempts, and they haven't used up all of their attempts, the quiz is not going to be checked off as completed. On that fifth attempt, they either get an eight or they use up their fifth attempt. Either one of those will say, oh, you either got your passing grade or you used up all your attempts. Um, the system is going to mark that as completed and, um, and be done with it. So again, you can save and return to course. And then that has a little checkbox as well. And then for discussion forums, the kinds of conditional uh, criteria, the kind of criteria for uh, conditional activity completion, it's going to be um, has the student looked at the discussion forum? Have they made at least one original post? Have they made at least one original post? Have they done at least four follow-up replies to other posts? And uh, once the students have done all of that, then uh, the system will mark that forum off as completed. So this is a, um, this is a tool that I don't think is used a lot. But you can imagine that if you've got your Moodle page set up, and the majority of the items that are listed along the page here have little check boxes. And there maybe are ones that don't have a checkbox, like um, you know, if I posted the syllabus up here, 
uh, you know, I might want to have require the students to view it, but maybe I've handed out the syllabus and it's just up there as a resource. So some things are not going to have check boxes. Some are going to have check boxes that the students have control over. Others are going to have check boxes that get checked off by the system when the students do things. Makes it very easy for the student to scan down through the class and say, oh, you know, I still need to do this, uh, but I'm set on these things. So again, uh, all of these tools that we can use for uh, making sure that students uh, stay on track, uh, participation report, completion tracking, um, and then this completion tracking ties in nicely with conditional release. So uh, if we go back to this course here, uh, this quiz is perhaps uh, covering the material that's in this PDF. And I have this PDF set up for Moodle to uh, indicate when the students have actually downloaded the PDF to look at it. Maybe I don't want the students taking this quiz until they have at least downloaded the PDF. That doesn't guarantee they've read it, but at least I know that they've downloaded the material that's available for the quiz. If I go into the quiz settings, I can um, go here under restrict access, and by default, none of the activities or resources that you put into your Moodle course have any sort of access restrictions. You can add a whole variety of different kinds of restrictions. You can set it up so that things are not going to be accessible to students until a certain date of the semester. Now, you can hide items and manually open them up, but you can also set up a date restriction and have Moodle do that automatically for you. Uh, what I think is powerful, though, is to tie in the completion tracking with an activity completion conditional release criterion. So if I select activity completion, I can say that, um, let's see, that was online teaching checklist must be marked complete before the student can take the quiz. Okay, so student must match this criterion in order to be able to even open up the quiz. If I click save and return to course, that quiz is going to show up to the student as grayed out, and they will see this. This is restricted. It's not available unless you have done this. And so as, as soon as students do this, and they're, um, of course, I'm in as the instructor. So um, as soon as students do that, and this is marked off as complete, then um, at that point, the quiz would open up to them. Okay. So you can do this in a very simple fashion like this, or you could be very, um, very complicated. And, you know, um, if you really worked at this, you could um, kind of really set up, uh, well, certainly you can control the sequencing of your course. Students can't do uh, X, Y, Z, and actually, let me go back here. Um, let me just check this. This used to be the case. I haven't checked it recently. You can set up whole sections of your course where, you know, students can't get in until, um, uh, the uh, not grade. I didn't want grade. Um, students won't be able to get into the course until uh, into this section of the course until you know July fourth. Uh, not July fourth. That's a let's say July sixth. And so um, 
that now this whole third topic is not available to students until this day um, date passes. This quiz is not available to students until they have finished this. So again, it, it allows you to kind of reinforce the sequence through which students are working through your course. You could, um, you could have a folder that has remedial materials maybe, although we don't like to use remedial terminology, um, you know, developmental materials. And you could set that up so that it's only released to students who get lower than a six out of 10 on such and such a quiz. So um, this kind of conditional release is useful for, uh, again, sequencing your course, but also providing at least some level of personalized adaptive release of materials to students based on how well they're performing or what what they're doing uh, in the course. You could have groups set up in your course to represent different teams and you could have a folder of resources that is only released to team A, for example, because the other teams don't need that material. So you can be either very simple or very complex and sophisticated. Uh, you could really set up a whole personalized learning uh, process that uh, would take students from day one and direct them through your course based on what they've done, what they've accomplished, uh, what choices they've made, and so forth. Um, so uh, let me pause here because I think these three together kind of make up a, a nice uh, unit of ways of you know, keeping students on track and directing them through your course in a particular way. Uh, Marie, do we have any questions? Um, uh, no, uh, nothing. Okay. Nothing as of right now. Okay, good. Uh, I think the last thing, since it is Friday afternoon, I don't really don't want to run long today. I think the last thing I'll I'll just pull up is the accessibility report, um, and let me go back into my. Um, Actually, my fall course was in pretty good shape. Let me go to my fall 2018 course, which was not quite as in good shape from an accessibility standpoint. Okay, so hopefully at this point um, you're all aware of the um, the uh, Blackboard Ally tools that we have integrated into Moodle to help us all um, do a little bit better job with the accessibility um, status for our course materials. Uh, you know these indicators provide uh, provide kind of a click a quick uh, graphical representation of you know which resources are in good shape, which ones could use some work, um, and so forth. I'm not sure if uh, as many faculty are aware that here under the report section under course administration, there is also an ally accessibility report that gives you kind of an overall view of uh, the status of your course, you know, rather than looking at those uh, resource items one by one. And so if I pop open the uh, accessibility report for my fall course, uh, it gives me kind of an overview of the course. I've got 39 PDF documents, I've got 26 labels, some discussion topics, uh, and so forth. I've got a whole number of items that have low scoring content. I've got some items here that are have the easiest issues to fix. So, you know, maybe I've got just a little bit of time. Um, let me start with something easy. So if I click here, it's going to list, well, there's this image here uh, that has a poor score. Uh, let me click on this and I'm going to, 
uh, this will pop up the ally tools and this image is getting a poor score because it doesn't have an image description. Well, that's easy enough for me to fix right here. Uh, word cloud um, listing various geology terms and showing how, pro how common they are. Ally should think that that's a fairly good image description. If I click and add that, look at that, well done. So uh, I get some immediate uh, positive feedback and now it's showing up as something that uh, you know really is uh, not something I need to worry about so much anymore. Um, let me see if I can reload the page and have that go away. No, it's still gonna show up for a while anyway. Um, so again, um, that's uh, again also listed here under those different tools, again uh, under those different reports. So just going over these, again the uh, course participation is the one that allows you to determine uh, who has not done a particular thing yet. Uh, there's the accessibility report. There are some other reports in here. If you need to, um, if you need to verify that the student that a particular student has come into your course on a particular day and interacted with certain uh, resources because of some issue that you're dealing with a student on, you can go in and look at the actual logs of every student interaction with every item in your Moodle course. Um, just let me show you one of these other reports. This uh, activity report sounds like it could be the course participation report, but it is different. Oh, oh, let me go back. We talked about completion tracking. There is a report that will, um, for every item that you have completion tracking turned on, it will give you a uh, visual representation of who's completed what uh, right, right there. You can, um, you can download that in a spreadsheet format that's probably more useful than trying to look at all of these uh, on the page here but there is also this activity report and this just lists everything that's in your course you know uh, pages um, urls discussion forums attendance activity folders etc cetera, etc cetera, and will tell you how many times it was viewed by how many users so um, you know, last fall I was uh, doing my little mini lectures off of Google slide presentations. So I thought, oh, well, I can just um, provide students link to my Google slides and anytime they wanna go back and review the slides, not the lectures per se, but the slides, um, you know, they would have that link. Well, I see that we have one view by one user of that resource and three use three views by three users uh, generally speaking I go through here this was not a popular addition to my course I thought I was doing my students a favor by adding links to my Google slides so that they could go back later on their own and review them and you know it really kind of not so much so either I I decide, well, that's still a good idea. I just have to figure out how to encourage students to make use of it, or I decide, well, you know, students really aren't interested, and so why should I, uh, uh, why should I take the time to add all of these links to my slides if it's not a resource that my students find valuable? So that activity report uh, can be useful uh, in helping you, not necessarily, well, maybe uh, in how you. Uh, run your course during the semester because if you see that you're putting stuff up and students as a whole across the class aren't using them then maybe you rethink how you present those and encourage your students to use it or maybe you use it for a longer term and say okay well the next time I'm going to run this course I'm not going to bother um, so um, 
there are a couple of other things I just want to mention. Uh, Moodle has a very nice competency framework that will allow would allow us to track uh, learning outcomes and competencies and at something uh, we as a campus aren't making a lot of use of. If you are interested in giving your students badges in response to things that they have done in your course, which can be another way to engage students, uh, maybe gamify your course a little bit, um, let me know and we can discuss that. But I think at this point, um, I'm going to stop the screen share. I'm going to